We're a little rusty, but we're back. 11 personnel presented by Monticello Bank. I'm Nick Roush, joined by Adam Luckett, who's at the KS office in Lexington, where uh, it's it's been an eventful week there. Uh, there was, there's been a lot happening. Last I was there, uh, there might have been a little leak in the ceiling, Luckett, so hopefully it isn't completely washed out. Hopefully you stay dry. Uh, Is that your patchwork job up there, Nick Roush? It's a little, it's a little rusty, uh, but you know it, it'll it'll work. Um, how, how we doing? How we been? I'm doing pretty good, I have to say. Um, why? Well, I mean, had a kid, obviously. Um, so that's why we have a podcast in a little bit. And then we had some basketball, a lot of basketball stuff. And so, but good to be back here with uh, the good football people. I'm in 11 personnel nation. So excited to get back with you, Nick, and talk to football. I know, uh, I know you probably haven't been talking much football on your radio program every morning. So um, I think this will be a distraction for some people, <laughs> for at least for now, in a good way. Uh, we we'll see, if, you know, the, not everything's going to go great. I think over the next few months, but uh, but football is going on, and it's a nice distraction, I think, for people right now. And Nick, an alternate universe, man. We almost had two coaching searches to cover within a three month period. Like Mark Stoops yeah. almost left. John Calipari almost departed, or at least at one time it looked like he might leave or might be asked to leave. And right, so right. It, it, it interesting, <laughs> if they if a couple of things bounce the other way, uh, I mean, you don't talk about head on a swivel summer and off season. Yeah, in uh, one, you had like a 24-hour-ish or so period where you thought, oh, this is, this is happening. This is, wow. Wow. Um, so yeah, things got a little weird. Glad to hear the family's doing well. Um, I, I know, I'm sure it's a, it's an exciting time at the Luckett House. I'm sure you're probably happy to be out of the house uh, there for a little while. So uh, I, I am, but I don't think my wife's happy that I'm out of the house right now. So <laughs> so I'm enjoying this little little uh, normal get to go to the office. Don't have to do this much in our line of work, but get to go to the office today, which is nice. Well, it is going to be nice. Let's let's cut through the crap and let's get to what's happening for Kentucky Spring Football right now. But first, I do need to remind you that our presenting sponsor is Monticello Bank. It's where people matter. They've been in business for 128 years because they put people first. They put the numbers on your side to get you the best rates available. No matter what your banking needs, they get you covered with 21 branches in 14 counties across the Commonwealth. You can visit one of them in person, help them finance your future, or visit them at NBCBank.com. And don't remember, too, when you're part of Monticello Bank, you can bank wherever with the Go NBC mobile app with Monticello Bank. Remember, equal housing, remember FGIC. Man, we are a little rusty. We're having technical issues. It's, it's, it's been too long. But part of that way, there is a lot of ball to talk about. Of good and look, I think we just kind of split it up. We just put a little offense, defense to kind of just make things global here. And the uh, you know, you never want to get too far ahead of your skis when it's five practices in, right? And two of those were helmets only. But the early returns on the Bush Hamden offense are positive and. The, the whole talk of tempo and everything, like, I, I, re- I truly believe it, it isn't just lip service, like Tubby Smith talking about how we're going to get up and down the court every year, right? Like, Kentucky fans, it's it's kind of like, the, oh, we're going to throw with the tight ends this year, the receiver. We, we do this to ourselves. We get excited, and then we get let down. But I, 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 I truly believe that this offense is going to operate significantly faster for two reasons. One, they're training like it. Um, Eli Cox said, yeah, like in the weight room, they've cut down on our rest time in between reps to simulate a no huddle offense. Like that's, that's how, if we want to play fast, we've got to be prepared to go fast. So they're starting in March to be ready to be able to do that in September. And then most importantly, like it, I think they were going to go fast no matter what, no matter who was calling the place. Cause a, you can't go solar, but B the early returns on the new helmet technology are universally praised across college football, especially at Kentucky, where 
trying to get plays in was a problem, and now that that just hasn't been an issue at all. So I I like the the overall general big picture direction this offense is moving in the first two weeks into practice. Yeah, I think with the offense, um, just in general, I think we need to need to remember they're not going to be Tennessee. a tempo offense, right? Yeah, yeah, they're not even even the tier below that or the two tiers below that. That's just not where they're going to be. I think what you want is just a smoother play calling operation and be able to get play calls in and out where you're not running against the clock when you're trying to run preset motion. And all that, and from that aspect, they're going to get better at that. Just from, I think, structure, the pre-snap structure of the offense. They're not; they don't need to huddle uh, every every play uh, with Bush Hampton's background and what he's done in the past. So I think that's number one for the offense. And then, like for me, Nick, the one thing I always compare it to when we get into this point of the, the season, the offseason, with the offense is. It, it should look great right now. We shouldn't hear any, any, anything bad. If you're hearing even the slightest negative thing, something's off. So, like, I mean, the easiest one to compare it to is just Rich Gangarello. And back then, Nick, it was uh, every time you went to practice, it was you know this is a pro offense. It's complicated, yada yada yada. You know, uh, I, I don't. You're not really hearing that. I don't think, and so far, and so to this point, I think they're right where they need to be. On offense, uh, and to me, the big thing for spring, uh, I mean, you mentioned the helmet communication. Obviously, that's going to help a ton. I mean, it's just right. going to make everything easier. Uh, and I bet, you know, for a guy like Liam Cohen, it's probably unfortunate. Really, they probably really could have used that last year. Uh, where I, I don't know if they'll need it. At, I mean, they'll still need it this year, but maybe not need it as much. Uh, but um, to me, this time of year is all about the individuals you hear about. Like, when I hear a freshman running back is already running with the ones as soon as the pads come on, like, that gets me excited. Yeah. Um, it's, it's little stuff like that. Um, that that That's what you want to see coming out uh, of this. And you get a guy like Jason Patterson who's got a historic – or not historic, but like a story kind of high school career and that he's already pushing, you know. that That's a good time. Like, that guy's yeah. probably going to be a player for you next year. That, and it's one of those things, too, like it where you just want what you saw in the high school to translate over, right? Like, you're just, I think this guy's going to be good, but, like, you, you don't really know until you know. And the same could be said about Hardly Gilmore, where it's a little bit different case where he's not pressing and they don't desperately need him to play right away. But when you got guys like Barry and Brown calling him a freak of nature because of his athleticism right because of his explosiveness his speed uh those are those are great great early signs um ones that i think should get you excited and it's also fun too when you you know you hear the whispers from from people who are at practice and then the coaches actually say yeah that's yes this is happening you're like oh okay so like i'm not i'm not just hearing things right i'm not the crazy one here like this is undeniable but these guys are playing well the same could be said about Dane Key like apparently that dude's just he's just been a badass I don't I don't really know another way to put it but he's been a badass this spring and to your point like it like that's just it's just music to our ears you're on the right track you're moving in the right direction uh, a third of your way through spring practice yeah I think if we were gonna sit down and write spring hot takes I think one of my first ones would be that this freshman class, the 2024 class, like they might have hit a home run here. Patterson's pushing for time. Gilmore um, is there. We all know the ceiling for Cutter Bowley. Brian Robinson, Gerard Smith, they both looked the part early on. Uh, I think they feel really good about that class, uh, at least to this point. I mean, there, there are guys already that I think are going to play where you compare it to last year's class, Nick, I think it's too early to tell. Where that group is going to end up, but they—I mean—that that class didn't make uh, much of a splash last year right. um, on the field. But the years before, that class made a huge splash, right? You know, Barry Brown, Dan Key, Josh Caddis, um, yeah, I'd go on down the list. Uh, Deion Walker, obviously. So right. early returns for I think the 2024 class I think are very promising. 
Um, again, I go back to Jason Patterson. That running back's a position you know pretty early. <laughs> can this dude tote the rock? Can this dude break tackles? And can this dude, um, has, does he have feel for what we want to do? It looks like Patterson does that. I'm very, I, I'm hoping we get an open practice here so we can go see him. And then definitely at the spring game, I think he's going to be one of the guys people yeah. probably pay the, mo- the closest attention to. Yeah, and just because he's wearing 26 doesn't mean we think he's going to be Benjamin Snell Jr. But even if he's just the the rotational guy, like they need that, right? Like that that was a, you got Chip for a year to buoy you, and we talked about it on signing day. Like you needed one of those three guys to hit between Patterson, Mizell, and Jamarian Wilcox. So, yes, that, that makes me happy. Um, one thing that did not make me happy, and maybe this is me just being a weirdo, um, which Anwar Stewart called him a weirdo, but like it was kind of in a fun, jocular way. He's like, yeah, he's just friends with everybody. He goes and hangs out with the equipment managers and everybody. But Anwar Stewart wants Dion Walker to be 325. Uh, what? What? No, no. not like I, I wanted Dion to be in shape and play all the snaps, but look it. Can't be. <laughs> we can't. Not. No, 325. That's too. No, he he can't be that small. Um, I'm I'm only halfway joking here, um, but that, that it's it's it sounds like they're just like this guy's got a crazy high motor. Let's make it to where we can just play him every single snap, and there's no issue. He's a, he'll be our Max Crosby, just every single damn snap. It doesn't matter. Put him in every single time and just r- wreck stuff. Well, Nick, we got some breaking news. A Du Fierro has entered the portal. So that's the first big domino over there on the basketball side. Yeah. But um, to Dion, to your point, I, th- I believe you've mentioned this on the show. Um, you've talked to your cousin over there, um, and he's even like been impressed that he could play that many snaps as a defensive yeah. lineman. Right. In the right. So, like, that alone, <laughs> number one, they don't want to take that guy off field. Um, to right. me, the bigger, you know, AMR wants him at a certain weight. No, that that's fine. But to me, it's less about the weight. It's more he mentioned the cardio, his endurance. That's what you need. You want because they don't want him to leave the field. And when they want him, they want him at a certain standard that he's playing at. Whether if you, you know, you don't want to dip under a certain percentage. Like, um, you know, everyone's seen that. Like, if it, in a video game, if he had a bar that showed like the juice he has left, right? They want that juice to stay above a certain amount. Uh, and so I think that's really what it's about with Dion Walker. Nick, I get the sense I haven't seen him in the Eclipse. I don't know if he's doing much this spring. I don't think right? he's doing anything. <laughs> I, I think his ass is he's 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 probably doing the agility drills right, like during the individuals, the hand yeah. placement stuff. But when they get in the trenches, he don't need to be doing anything. And it's part because you got other guys who need those reps. Um, they talked about Keyshawn Silver today and. I love that Anwar brought up his weight, but he was like, we can't get him down. He's just big. Like, it's just, he just is who he is. Um, I, I get this. We're not going to have to worry about the defensive line too much. And I love that Brad White, he's, he's, he loves to be in the Mark Stoops. He made the mistake early in his career where he said, we're not going to have to worry about the pass rush. And then the pass rush sucked. Um, It might've been 19. I think that that was the case. uh, The year after Josh Allen. Uh, so he he's one who doesn't like to dole out compliments right away, but he mentioned a guy that Barion talked about as being a guy who's tough to go up against, and that's Jansen Dunn. And um, I had low expectations. Um, I did for for him. Just like it, you, you hope that one of those guys would hit. So that I was pleased that that, that like he came out right away and said, yeah, J- J- this is a guy who seems to be taking his medicine and learned a lot from those reps that he received late in the season. Yeah, I think you go back to Dunn. I think you just – this is why like, player profile, like creating profile, it's important to always remember these. This guy was the top 200 player coming out of high school. And a bunch of – everybody wanted him. He lands at Ohio State. And he's kind of been through the ringer early in his career, changed positions, right? Like, he's never really had home at Ohio State or Kentucky. That Kentucky comes in, they try him at corner, they move to nickel, they play him early in the year, he kind of gets lost in the shuffle. 
Um, but then he emerges late, and he had some good moments against Louisville and Clemson, but he also had some bad moments. Uh, he was the player that was playing nickel on that when they hit that out to the sidelines on like third and 18 on that last drive. Nick, um, if he gets depth there, if Club Nick throws that, it's probably a pick. Right. So right. like, so he was all that was that was you know he had a, some bad moments too, um, but we know what kind of athlete and profile he has, and so. This year, it sounds like he's really taken a step forward. And if he, he's always been a player. If, he, if, if that guy puts it together, he's going to be a good player. And he's starting to put it together. And it's at a big position of need here. Uh, they don't really have – I wouldn't say they have a plan, but there's not a clear answer there at that nickel spot. Correct. Correct. Right? We've seen them play safeties there. Do they want to do that? We've seen them play – like cornerback inside. Do they want to do that? That's something they're going to have to figure out. But at least, to me – Dunn's given them a real option there. And, I, and to me, I'd be interested to see the top option at corner right now, outside corner, as opposed to Maxwell Hairston. Or where does that sit? Or is he their top nickel guy? Um, and then they got the safeties. They went out and got Christian Story. So now they've got proven safeties that can play. So how do they balance and kind of yeah. mix and match, right? And that's what you want to find out. But I think it's a good sign with Dunn, you know, not – not every transfer hits right away, right? Yeah, Sometimes yeah. it takes a little bit of time. Maybe that's this is just one of those instances where he got a year under his belt within the system, and now he's ready to go seize a position be a, or play a big role on, on this defense. And I think that, to me, that was a good sign because that's clearly a position of worry or concern, I think, for Kentucky entering this season. One thing I'm not worried about is uh, Pop. Jamie Dubas Johnson is looking the part, playing early on. Uh, he's a – they list him at 260, Bucket. I don't – is that, is that right? Like, is he just that dense? Like, I should just, have asked him – I should have asked him that today. Um, I don't think that's right. I would think around 240-ish, but yeah. – uh, the, there, there's not linebacker. They used to all be like about that big, right, uh, right? But now, like you go to the combat, everyone's 240 to 245, where they used to be 260, 265. Uh, so I don't think that's right, but I hope it is. Just like let's just have a big, big ass run stuffer there in the middle, him and Eric Jackson. But uh, you joke about that, but I, I really like that linebacker tandem, man. It's playing behind this defense line. Like, I think Kentucky's run defense, again, if you were going to make hot takes for the season, I would, I'm would. willing to go out on a limb that this is going to be the best run defense we've seen in the Mark Stewart era. I just, I think all the pieces are there for that. I'm a little concerned with the best defense, obviously. We need to see some progression there. But in the, if teams want to play this group in the box, I think Kentucky's going to be able to get team in a lot of second and third and longs. Yeah, which – um, they had trouble getting off the field on those last year. Um, but that that is to address uh, for a, a later day. I, I did want to bring up what uh, Phil Johnson said earlier because it, it made me laugh. Um, he said, UK football needs a blue light show. And I thought he said they need a Bud Light show. And I was like, dude, you are preaching Don't the choir, all. man. Give, it, give, us, give us the Bud Light show. I want to see the Bud Light show. Don't worry. Uh, Phil, that that is going to come this fall with upgrades to Kroger Field, and I just wanted to mention too, Lucky, because I Pro Day was my first time getting to step inside the renovated Nutter Field House, and it rocks. It's yeah, so it's sharp. nice. It, it like not just the look, the lighting, all the signs and everything on there, but even just having all that additional space. It feels like you got so much room to operate. You know, like when they do their individual drills. The, the linemen can go hit the sleds and do their individual stuff without having to to mess with what they're going on and route running on the other side of the field, right? Like, there's just room to operate. And the, the other thing, too, is that turf. I mean, that used to be a health liability. Now it's the same thing they play on on Saturdays at Kroger Field. So, like, there's no yeah. difference. I don't think they've been outside yet. No, they have not. Stoops. Five, five, five for five inside in the indoor. Stoops. He Miami made him soft. Tallahassee, <laughs> he 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 lost some of that Youngstown edge with the cold weather. He he likes to stay inside now when he when he doesn't have to. Yeah, I think the biggest 
deal with the indoor. I mean, spring almost like, it, especially in a climate like Kentucky, like this is really where it's important. Yeah. They can get in there and they can have normal spring practice, but they can do it inside. So no matter what the weather is outside, Correct. they don't have to worry about that. They don't have to balance, well, we need to practice morning, afternoon. No matter what, they can go inside and practice there in the spring when you're not really worried about, like, the elements. During the season, you want to get out there in case – you well, do. we're going to have to play in the heat. Right, right. You know, it's raining today. We need to get some ball, wet ball work. Yeah. Um, if it's cold, we're going to play in 38-degree weather, so we need to be out of practice in anyway. Where I've, when you get into the spring, I don't think you're worried about it. No. And you just, want to, you just want to stay on schedule and have your normal routine, Correct. fundamental practice. And you can do that specifically in this facility because it's so much bigger, Nick. Um, like you mentioned, they just have room to operate more efficiently in there, and they're not running into each other, and they're not playing on 1987 carpet in there. Like had um, you were at the Wandell Robinson Pro Day. I mean, the whole the whole building got deadly silent when he when his what was yeah. it toe got caught in the turf there. Yeah, yeah, that was that was something else. Um, I did. Uh, I, I I me as a coach, I'm getting my kids used to element. I'm I'm helping coach uh, my son's three through five-year-old t-ball team and on tuesday night we got a little bit of rain so that that was first off kids in the rain they love it but there was a moment where you look around and you're like oh this is might be getting too bad uh and then as soon as i had that thought it, it stopped so we're, we're doing some uh wet ball training we're, we're ready to roll when it comes to t-ball now we just have to work on uh, not fighting over the ball. There's big problems. We got team chemistry issues. A lot of kids, everybody wants to pick up the ball and throw it to first. They also do this thing like it where they pick up the ball and then they run like halfway to first before they throw it. It's like, just throw it. Just, just cock it back and throw it. Like You, you can do it. Just just do it. Let it rip. Uh, the Pirates, we, we start our, our first games are after spring break. So um, who knows how that'll go. There's 10 kids on the team, and I don't think we've had more than six show up at one night. So who knows? Who knows what it's going to be like? But it's a it's a fun adventure uh, in parenthood. You'll be there for too long. Uh, right now, I'm sure it's just a lot of spit up, a lot of crying. Uh, are we getting any sleep at all right now, or is it just uh, grind mode? You're probably still in, like, just, just survive in advance. Yeah, Hank hasn't been too bad to this point. First night back from the hospital was brutal, up every hour. But since then, he'll sleep for three hours at a time. Um, so we each get a decent amount of sleep in chunks. So he hasn't been too bad from that aspect. So Baker was a good sleeper too, so we've caught two nice. good breaks at least with that. The problem is has been a, the one-and-a-half-year-old, Baker, just raising absolute hell in the house while we're trying to take care of an infant. You know, I'm trying to work. Taylor's trying to watch Henry. Uh, Baker's just pulling on the dog's tail, yeah. uh, opening the patio door, unlocking the front door. Just just uh, real reckless stuff from, <laughs> from my toddler right now. You know, you don't, he doesn't get 100% of the attention now, so he's got to find it somewhere else. So uh, don't worry. They'll be, they'll be playing with each other, keeping each other busy before too long. Love, too, that you, you – he's, he's just Hank. Like, that's a, that's a great – it's a great name. Uh, we got a Hank and a Frank. Uh, I did have a friend, too, who he also had a Henry about a month or so ago, and Henry was undefeated. Uh, the cats were undefeated. And then, like, I don't know what Henry did, at, but, like, crashed and burned there at the end. But we don't have to talk about the crashing and burning. I do want to tell you all, though, about Well, FanDuel. I think it was mine. Mine was, mine was born, and then that's when the, the oh, fall started. It did. It it it, it, it jinxed it. it. It took away his special powers. Um, if you're on a heater or you want to ride a heater, then you got to hop on over to FanDuel because FanDuel is America's number one sports betting app. It's the best. They've got all your props, parlays, whatever it may be. If you're a new customer right now, you get two hundred dollars in bonus bets with any five dollar bet. 200 bucks if your ticket cashes when you sign up and use promo code PERSONNEL or type one in the address fanduel.com slash PERSONNEL to sign up and your first winning ticket will get you $200 in bonus bets to play with throughout March Madness. They've also got college baseball in there. The Batcats are hot. We've got the Masters 
coming right around the corner. Um, Kentucky Derby, right? Like they've got it. You can, you can bet the ponies with FanDuel too. That's why FanDuel is the best. So get on over to FanDuel right now. Sign up today. Put in the promo code personnel. First winning ticket, $5 or more. Get you 200 bonus bets. Must be 21 plus in present Kentucky. First online real money wager only. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. I see terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. One thing that I, that I like about FanDuel 2, two is their futures. Their future wagers are the best in the biz. And I, uh, I, I'm a big fan of betting the Final Four teams this week. And I love the juice we're getting on Illinois and Creighton. Getting some great juice there for some upsets. It was chalky first round. Let's get some upsets here in, in, in the second weekend of the tournament. You're betting against Rick Barnes? Can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Rick <laughs> Barnes in March. Um, what could go wrong? Uh, and, Nick, we got Masters coming up. We will be giving out picks this year, so get ready for that. And some other golf shenanigans. Hey, we've got PGA Championship coming to our beautiful state, too, uh, next month. Or two months. Well, I guess two two months from now, but really kind of yeah. feels like next month. So, yeah, I mean, like, get locked in. They got everything. You want to – Dab once in baseball, you can do that. You got some futures. You can bet vision winners. You can bet. It's opening um, day. Over, you see, win totals. Yeah. And then you can do some, you can actually do some real creative stuff with baseball betting, right? You can build par, parlays and you can bet on the run line. You can bet money lines. And so uh, if you're trying to find, just if you're trying to scratch that itch just a little bit, there's plenty, there's plenty to do on there. And we'll, we'll definitely have some golf winners here throughout the summer. Are the Reds going to be good? I feel like they're not. It's things they have a chance. They, I mean, they've really got a chance to probably get to 90 wins, I think. But the pitching has to stay healthy. It did not stay healthy last year. They won despite it, but bad injury luck out the gate here. Yeah, um, that, that, Matt, that's my I, worry. Yeah, like the I'm McClain not really injury. worried about well, the Marte one really hurt because he was supposed to be their next like stud and he's out 80 games. Uh, but the McLean one's a big one. Like, for, TJ Friedel, they'll be fine, and he'll be back in May. But McLean, I, I haven't really seen a report. Like, they, like the quote they gave was, we're hopeful he'll return this season. Well, that, yeah, doesn't sound very pro- no. that doesn't sound very promising to me. Uh, and so that would be a big loss if they didn't have him. Now, they have good depth there, but I, he was, you know, you can make the argument that he's their best player. So not having him in the lineup and on defense and having his defensive versatility being able to play short and second um, that 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 would hurt if you uh if you didn't have him for pretty much all season um, but they got they've got the potential star power i mean if ellie puts it together it's a stud and then a la crew or excuse me theory can be an all-star i think uh in crossing and strand can be really really good if he puts it together um but the, the injuries are concerning the division is wide open i think the brewer the brewers should probably take a step back but the cubs and cardinals should both be in the mix so it kind of it comes down to which one of those teams can probably get to 88 wins. And I think the Reds got a good chance, but I don't love the vibes starting the year off um, the way they're starting. Not not great vibes up in Cincinnati. Um, but that's enough baseball talk. This is a football show, so let's get back to a football question. We got in the YouTube chat. We appreciate you all subscribing. Now up to 30K subscribers. Appreciate you all following along. We'll have plenty more content coming throughout spring ball. Ernest asks Gilmore Patterson, who will get the most run on offense? And uh, newcomers on defense, who who will get the most run from this incoming group? I can't anticipate, look at barring injury, that Gilmore would play a role any larger than what Ant- Anthony Brown Stevens played last year, which is a couple games he's he's part of the game plan and they get it to him. But right now, I think it's more of. This is the time for those guys, and Jamori Macklin is apparently not practicing yet. We're not really sure why, but it sounds injury related. So he's getting a lot of run now, but there's just a lot of older guys ahead of him that I think will. So offensively, you'd have to lean Patterson, I think, out of them all. And I don't, I don't know how many others are even in consideration on the offensive side of the yeah. line of scrimmage. Yeah, and this is a lot of this personnel position based here, Correct. Nick. It's a lot easier for a running back to come in and play a 
big role as a freshman. It's like you see that less as receiver at the receiver position. We're just um, true freshmen coming in and have a big role. Yeah, Barry on and Dane are just crazy exceptions, and we just got that, you know? Yeah, and you make the argument that they maybe needed a year of development before being thrusted into that position um, like they were in year one. But Patterson, like you look at Kentucky's running back room, and there's a it's potential there for him to have a big role in the offense. And so I would, he would be my answer to that. I think you switch over to the other side of the ball, defense. I think Brian Robinson and Gerard Smith are both going to play. So that, that would be one there. And then after that, I always thought maybe a linebacker, off-ball linebacker, could maybe have a rotation role. But, Nick, we got some good news, I think, at least from my perspective. Um, Grant Godfrey's now a inside linebacker. And that makes me feel a lot better about that position, not necessarily this year, but moving forward. Um, I think he's a guy with a ton of potential. Um, and I think he's going to be a guy that become their fourth linebacker behind Pop Thomas Johnson, um, Derek Jackson, Dave M. Rayner. And then he's going to be a guy they look to build around, I think, in 2024. And so I, I like that news, especially with how young they're getting at the position after signing like 18 freshman linebackers in this last class. And so I, I, I like that. So defensively, I, I haven't heard anything about Teron Nichols. I thought we would hear something yeah. about him. He was the guy in the yeah. secondary I thought could maybe find a role. Yeah, um, I like seeing Nasir Addison make a play. And even though he's not a red shirt because of his what he did on special teams last year, we saw him pick off a pass. And Brad White did the, like, I'm going to be a um, – not a hard ass about, but he was very clear that like Nasir's doing the freshman stuff. He's really good, but he's got to work on finishing. Um, but I, I, I did want to point out too, even though we've all kind of assumed that Brian Robinson, just based on his work ethic is going to play. I appreciate too the, the little bit of humble pie from Anwar where it's like, we got to start his technique and everything from scratch. You know, everything is going to start from the bottom up. Um, because he's a big physical guy, but like you can't just win with a speed rush or a bull rush. You you got to be able to do more. So that's one of those. It's not like I want to necessarily throw cold water on it, but he is going to have some work to do. There's there's no denying that. Which uh, speaking of the edge, um, we got one chatter who asked if if Fearbury is our only true bender on the edge. Maybe yes. Yeah, like, and that's that's why he's. Let's he's pull up a big the roster player. spreadsheet here. Just run through the names: JJ Weaver, power player, no. run first. Yep. Noah Matthews, probably more the same as Weaver. And then you're looking at Jacob Smith, Caleb Red, and I would say, um, Fearbury's the only true kind of bendy rush they have in that room. Um, Jacob Smith to me is more of kind of Nick that Jordan Wright role off ball Sam linebacker. Uh, where Fibri, he, I mean, he's a very, very important player. Uh, yes. If you're ranking most important individuals on this football team, he's, he's up there because they need his ability to bend the edge and be an edge, a true edge pass rusher. Um, they need it bad. And we saw it in, I think, you see it in the Clemson game. If you just turn on the tape, he just looked different than guys they've had there for the last few years. Like his get off, um, his bend. It just looks different with him. And so if he can put that together, now they listed him at 245 pounds, and if you looked at him last year, he was very thin. He looked like 225, 230. So if he's truly added 15 pounds, that's a very, very good sign. So, yeah, to answer the question, um, he is. But um, I'd still expect him to have a big year. And Brad's already talked about his – or Brad White's already talked about his maturation both physically – and mentally taking coaching better um, this spring. And so I think that that's a good sign regarding fear. He's going to be a very, very integral piece of the defense season. One thing we didn't get to either that is significant was the offensive line. Um, because like it, I was, I was waiting for that moment to happen, and I really didn't know if it was going to happen. Are, are we going to? Are we going to talk to Wolf? Like, how, how's this whole thing going to go? You, you know? you, let's stop you right quick. How surprised were you when he walked out there? I was shocked. And, 
you know, I was chatting with John Hale from Herald Leader beforehand, and he's like, yeah, you know, I requested Wolford. We'll we'll see if we'll get him or not. And Wolf just comes saunering up. And the thing, too, about him is when you interview him in the middle of the season, he can be kind of surly and short with his responses. So I was like, what are we even going to get here, right? Like, what's Wolf going to say? And he, dude, it was, I, I I've had plenty of shocking experiences in this business, like both good and bad. Tuesday was just, I mean, for so many reasons. We had Bush Hamden took the bait on a question about newcomers playing well. I'm like, wait, you're giving me freshmen that are playing well? What? I was like, hell yeah, that's awesome. And then Wolf comes out, and not only does he come out and talk, he gives us like eight minutes where he's like trying to be cordial. He's thinking of Mia, and he's talking about how much he loves Lexington. I'm like, what is going on here? And then he starts like getting into things and he's giving you good first, but so much so that he almost starts yelling at us about, we got to feel, we got to be physical. We got to go out there. You can't, these yeah. kids these days, you got to show them because they're not just going to get, <laughs> you can't tell them. Yeah. Go, you got to show them. And I thought he was going to just bite my ass right there. I mean, he is. That <laughs> is one thing. grass drills right there in the facility. Oh, oh man. Like, they Say what you want about the guy, like his intensity, if that doesn't translate to physicality, which is what Stoops wants, then I don't know if anything ever will. Now, I don't know if I'm buying completely, like part of the grievances we filed in 2021 was that he didn't play anybody else, and he's telling us they've got more depth now than they ever had in 21. I don't I don't know if I buy that, but Bush Hamden talked about Jalen Farmer, and that's – yeah. I guess they had a quality third piece with Dylan Red last year. Uh, but like that the the third the third guard is like such a unheralded integral position to an offensive line, and it seems like they really like what they got out of him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to me, I think Wolford, like he obviously heard the criticism about what fans and people had about him, like, right, left for Alabama. Left him in a bad spot, no depth, didn't rotate. And to me, he just played all the hits there, right? He addressed, like, you know, uh, big wall. He addressed, uh, you know, play what, what Mark Stoops wants, wants a rotation, happy to be here, all that all that stuff. The, the big thing, I think, that stood out was, uh, again, Austin Ramsey's name getting in the mix. That's interesting. Can he do anything as a redshirt freshman? Um, and the physical talk. I mean, we've heard Mark Stoops talk about it. We've heard Bush Hamden talk about it. We even heard Liam Cohen talk about it before he left. And now we've heard Eric Wolford talk about it. Um, there are probably some positions that are that you maybe want to protect from a physical standpoint. Uh, Nick, uh, part of me thinks that that line is just absolutely beating the crap out of each other um, right now over there in practice. Like, they have pretty much set the, the expectation that they're going to be able to run the ball. And Wolford even mentioned, sch- like, schematic part of it. Like, not necessarily, like, the outside runs, right? The uh, stretch, stretch zone or getting outside. It's yeah. more <laughs> downhill. you put putting the face on somebody, can <laughs> move. And I think that's a huge part of this line. I think yeah. there was a lot of frustration that they couldn't run the ball in the, AM, uh, in the AMB gaps last year. Um, and that they were in – that, that was, I think, they believe was a root of many of their offense problems was because of that. And so that they're trying to figure that out right now. Um, and I think guard, center guard, uh, play, it plays a big deal in, in all that. So they're trying to find uh, the answers there. They know Eli Cox is going to be an answer at one of those three spots, but they don't know where the two guard spots is really up for grabs. And so I think that's something they're trying to, to figure out right now. And it's going to be – like, again, if we get open practice or in the spring, I'm very interested, like, who's running with the ones there on the offense line. Um, I know I know who the two tackles are going to be. You know, Mincy and Marcus Cox are going to be the two tackles, and I know who the yeah. center is going to be um, yeah. in spring, at least till Cortland Ford gets back. But we don't really know what ha- what's going to happen at guard. And that's going to be something to monitor, I think, uh, when we yeah. start – when we get some more intel from the spring. It's clear, I, I, at least I think it is, that you're probably starting Dylan Ray at left guard and Jagger at right, and then it's a, yeah. well, does Farmer Let take one of their spots? And I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. 
I do get the he sense threw out that Dylan like, Ray, he threw out Dylan Ray at tackle, and I wonder if they'd rather just have him at tackle. Because they've mentioned that multiple times. The only reason he was playing guard um, – was, was that a necessity? Or, I wouldn't say yeah. only, but might have been because Ben Chrisman was supposed to be their backup. And then that happened, and then they had injuries, suspensions, or whatever throughout the season at guard, so he just ended up playing a, a boatload of snaps there. Yeah, so th- that part's fascinating. I mean, you you mentioned it too, no Ford this spring. Uh, Wolf let it say that he had rich surgery, so it is going to be the, the Mincy and Marcus Cox show. Um, at offensive tackle, they're going to be asked to protect Barack Vandergriff. And yes, we made it 40 minutes, like it, into a spring practice show without talking about the quarterback. What? Look at us. And I think that's exactly the way Mark Stoops wants it. I think that's exactly the way Bush Hamden wants it, where I haven't heard one bad thing about Brock, but I also think a lot of that is we're not going to... We, we don't want to put everything on this kid to be savior. We don't want to make the same mistake we did last year. Um, so I, I think that's part of where they're at him, but I, I, I've i got, well, again, I've got no reasons to have people worried about Brock Vandergriff right now. Uh, do you? I, yeah, I think I, I was even talking to my father-in-law about that. That was his first question. It's just how the, how's the quarterback doing? And I said, well, I don't really know. I mean, haven't heard anything bad, so that's really what yeah. you want to hear. I think the reason we haven't talked about him, Nick, is because there's nothing really to talk about. He's a starting quarterback. That's not in doubt, he, and he's got to go prove it. He's got all the, you know, he's got a, a skill set that is intriguing. I mean, we've touched on this when he committed, but he's got to go out and prove it. and go out and do it, and until we see him do it, there's really not going to be much to say, I don't think. Uh, now, getting to see him in live action, whether it be the spring game or open practice, then we'll have some more there. But for right, now, right. it's just, you know, we'll, TB, it's a big TBD, I think, and there's not really much to talk about. The only thing and, we really know is that he's their starter, and that's that's just where it is at, the, at this point to me. Here's the thing, too. It's going to be TBD for a lot of people until that August 31st. I mean – even well, after the South spring Carolina game, game really. Well, yeah. To me, it's like yeah. week two. That's when we see. Right. Because I think the former five stars probably looking pretty good, but it's it's a lot of difference, Eddie Green would say, when the bullets are flying. Uh, to redirect to recruiting, fuck it. We're not going to have to have this conversation in June about Kentucky starting behind because they're not. I they're, know. Looking forward to that. I, that. that that makes the experience better. Where I'm the where um <laughs> where I'm not where you and me are not John Snow pulling out the sword on that KS board. Um, yeah, telling they're gonna be like they got they fine. Uh, but yeah, I, I do like the start here. I think they got off to a good start. Um, pound in Ohio early, right? Quentin yeah. Simmons, uh, Brennan Ward, Tucker yep. Caddis. You're getting into Cincinnati with Simmons, and Caddis, and then you. Getting into Columbus, Greater Columbus with Ward, and then two in two in Pennsylvania. You got into Philadelphia, and then you got Stone Saunders there at Harrisburg, Bishop McDevitt. So I like I like where they're at, and they've got some players or prospects or targets, whatever verbiage you want to use. They've got some guys I think are close to committing, so I think they're in a good spot. Um, Nick, are you getting nervous about Martell's Carter at this point, or do you still feel pretty confident where they stand? Not yet, and I think it's because I always – there was, like, a lot of buzz that it was happening, and it always just felt a little premature in my eyes just because it felt like a guy of that um, pedigree who had – I mean, like, his uncle was pretty big at 24-7. You know, like, there's there's a lot of family that's in the business. I didn't anticipate him just saying, no, nah, I'm not going to go through the process. So I'm not sweating it out too much. I'm glad – we got the, there's no drama with Caddis. We got him on board. I think him and Simmons are both a little underranked. I don't really understand. Caddis was a top 10 tackle, and then they decided he's going to be a guard, and now he's not a top 10 player in Ohio. Like he's like 26 or something. I don't really get that. One, one thing that I'm going to be intrigued to follow, Lucky, because you mentioned the Pennsylvania guys, I think Kentucky's next secondary market is going to be the Mid Atlantic. And I, a lot yeah, of it I is going to be that way. 
a lot of it's going to be competition based and also coaching based. Like you already had Brad doing some work up there. He's been there enough now that that logo is familiar. And you had Liam doing some stuff with Woodward. Now you bring yeah. in Dykel Shorts, who has a lot of experience in that area. And really, like, who are you recruiting against up there? Penn State. Maybe Michigan. But, like, that's it. There's, so I think from a competition standpoint, they see these guys who are like, oh, we don't have to get in bidding wars with Georgia or Texas. or You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're just uh, – so I think that that's something I'm going to keep an eye on. Um, you know, they've already got a couple up there. And I, I think – I think that number could grow. So uh, something yeah. to keep an eye on, uh, especially if they add to their nil coffers like it. And uh, th- they did something today to to crank that up a notch or two. Yeah, with with Martell's Carter, just to trace back a little bit here, okay. he keeps visiting. So as long as he keeps visiting, I think they're in a good spot. Caddis, I think the ranking is make you wonder, but to me, he's a very high floor prospect. Um, you know what you're going to get. I think guard is the right position for him. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just a mid-Atlantic, Nick, I think recruits rank like 200 to 500. Um, that could be a potential honey hole for Kentucky because of the competition aspect. If kid is in that ranking and he is in Alpharetta, Georgia, you know, you're going up against – Yeah. Sharks in SEC country and in Florida State sniffing around, Clemson sniffing around, and it's just tougher. Where you, if you're in greater, if you're in Pittsburgh or you're in Philadelphia and you're ranked there, Penn State's always the factor that you have to consider recruiting up against. But after that, you know, you don't, you don't, you do not fear Maryland if you're Kentucky, you do not fear Rutgers. If you're Kentucky, Michigan sits around in New Jersey, so that's one you, you're going to butt heads with. But it's it's an area I think they can pull players, rank, high, more highly ranked players out of there. And Isaiah West fits kind of in that range. Uh, Stone Saunders fits kind of in that range. Tyrese Fearbury was in that range. And so I think that's – and then you add in to kill shorts, New Jersey, Yeah, that adds up to me. Um, and Syracuse is another one with Fran Brad now that's going to be more yeah. of a factor in that area. Right, right. Um, but I, I get the why Kentucky likes, I think, swimming in those waters. And I, that's definitely – I don't think that's going away. Cameron Miller is another one. He's from New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. He's a big Kentucky word. could land him. I mean, they're, they're fighting Michigan and Wisconsin for him. Those are the type of team – you're fighting – it's more Big Ten battles. Uh, right. Where as if you're in Tampa or if you're in Georgia – or if you even Nashville, those are SEC battles, and those are tougher to win. Um, but Big Ten, I think those might be a little, you could argue, a little easier to win. And so I think that's where Kentucky's at. And even Nebraska in the past, they've been in the mid-Atlantic area. So that's a team Kentucky's had success reading head to head against. And so, yeah, I, 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 I don't think that's a bad idea uh, about a recruiting operation there in Lexington. So there, there's, I will say too, uh, kind of nice that they got Caddis to. Go ahead and pop. Um, just know it's good to have – things are going so well. It's good to have some good football news to kind of cheer everybody up. Um, good to have another ass kicker on board. Um, if you watched any of his highlight reel, like the first play, he's just driving to do 20 yards yeah. down the field, and you're like, that's a cat right there. Like, that, that's a heavy-handed ass block. <laughs> he ain't messing yeah, around. Yeah, and I can, even, I can even tell you from seeing him in a camp last summer that he <laughs> mixes it up a little bit. And so I think he fits the mold of what Kentucky has, su- has succeeded here in Kentucky. Um, oh, he's a yeah. good offense guard. So, uh, at the, again, I, I think he's a high floor prospect. I think you could easily project him to being a starter here. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, I did mention about just Kentucky nail efforts. We have the new 500 club, like it. 500 club. Reminds me of the 15 or the five timers club on SNL. Um, that they have whenever you've hosted five times. I, I enjoy that bit quite a bit. And I think the folks who are willing to um, donate to Kentucky's nail efforts, they're going to enjoy it too. Um, get a private VIP concert with John Legend. That It's a very, this is very, uh, like, I just like that this is very SEC football behavior. You know, like it's hard to, yeah. I, I get that there's a lot of, it's, it's really hard to wade through the nil news and this collective and who's enjoying 
I get that it's difficult, but like, I do just love that. It's like, we want to raise some money. We're going to have this concert with John legend. So let's, let's go get our football players paid. Yeah. I think missed a good branding opportunity. They could just call this the craft house. <laughs> like who are we getting here? <laughs> you know, Ooh. like that, 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 that could have been a nice little brand, uh, a nice little name. <laughs> um, but I, no, I think it's more evidence, Nick, that they're just they're operating like a legitimate SEC program, um, and that they're they're good. They the funds and the commitment is in place for them to continue getting players, and that's uh, that's the number one priority. And it get even more important with Texas and Oklahoma and no divisions. You know, you got to It's a you're trying to keep up the Joneses, right? And you right. got to have yeah. the talent keep up. And I think it's a good sign. For future roster building, you know, with NIL, Nick, all of this stuff is so fluid. Everything, so much is changing, you know. So, but it's a good, I think, starting place or place or foundation uh, for where we're at right now in the modern college football space. Uh, so, definitely a, a a good step, and it's going to be a May tenth. Adam will be in Lexington. Neymar Gotzi has a concert or a comedy show at Rupp Arena. So that'll be going on at the same time. So who knows? I might uh might end up rubbing shoulders with some important people. Are you gonna? Or make if they're gonna the let us three... in, if they if they want to let let us in and let us, you know, interview John Legend, uh, yeah. let a person else special, uh, get old John Legend on here, then we can talk some ball. Oh, you're not gonna make the three year fifteen thousand dollar annual commitment. Not, uh, not, not the uh, cards. It would, t- it would take three years to build up that that, that money. If it's kept paying in three years, then maybe. But uh, I'm not ready to write those big tuition checks just yet. Yeah, we we got we got to write big tuition checks for these kids we're raising. So um, I don't know. You you're you're going to be getting Bullet County Public Schools, the bastard. Um, so you don't have to worry about it too much. I did like uh, somebody in the chat. It was Russ made a good point that Bear Bryant got a lot of good players from the Mid Atlantic. Uh, Blanda, I believe Frank Kersey too. Yeah, um, Arts. Yeah, Arts still is their jersey. Um, Camden. Yeah, Freddie will Freddie tell you they used to. Uh, even uh, Jerry Claiborne was Pennsylvania was a big pipeline yeah, state he, for Kentucky. That's back where then. he uh, flew up in a plane with Jerry Bell to like uh, Pennsylvania and thought they were going to die mm-hmm. on the on the flight up there. Right. I, I'm pretty sure Andy Hollerin was from Pennsylvania, Nick, and he's got. Eight trillion tackles or something ridiculous. Um, yeah. And so yeah, they got they got a lot doctor, of good. Which they got a lot. They like, got a lot of good players up there back in the day. I mean, imagine Jeff Snedeker or Cash Daniel being your doctor, right? Like that's Randy Hard. <laughs> He's got a, a. I mean, you're saying eight hundred, and that's you're not far off. It's like seven hundred and fifty tackles. <laughs> He's a. He's like a brain surgeon. That's incredible. Uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, Look at, looking forward, two weeks to the spring game, two Saturdays till the spring game, one o'clock. It's going to be free admission. Hopefully good weather at the Krogue. They haven't had that in a while. Um, it'll be SEC Network Plus if you can't make it out there. And then one month from today's NFL Nick, draft. Beer at the first ever spring game this year. Ooh. Yeah. We don't, that, Saturday. Uh, can we get in the, can we get in the like, press box? I like the Friday night spring games. I wish that was still what they were doing. It was, I thought, the best. Um, Saturday at 1, a little harder, but, yeah, maybe uh, <laughs> get, I don't think that's going to happen. This isn't Louisville, for Pete's sake, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which, if you want to make fun of them now, like that, that coaching search, that was that was hilarious. It really – and you all, and if you're not in the city of Louisville, the fact that – I mean, there's three radio stations – Three Louisville shows all happening in the afternoon. And yeah, like the fact that they all had their own sources and they all had like three different names pop up every other day. It was one of the most entertaining weeks of content I, I, I can ever remember. It was manic and crazy and a little bit exhausting. But like they, they, they were the Twitter spaces people. If you were invested in Twitter spaces, you made some bucks yeah. this week on U of L radio. No kid. Um, 
Yeah, I think uh, the leaks were the leaks are what made it tough. Everything was it felt like it was getting out during that search. Yeah, it was, and so it was you just you were. It was so herky jerky for following it. You're you're here. You're there. You're here. You're there. This guy, that guy, this guy, that guy. Uh, so yeah, it, it definitely looked an or, unorganized for a good chunk of it. So uh, that was entertaining. I was making the joke online. I mean, it really was honestly, Nick. It was about the closest thing I've seen to that Tennessee search. It didn't get to that level because yeah. that one. I mean, that one they had to fire the AD and they brought back. The old coach. That would have been like if they, you know, if they would have uh, fired um, Hurd and they would have brought, you know, one of Patino's old assistants, then they would have made him the D and he would have went hired. I mean, that's kind of what it felt like. Mark, Mark um, Lieberman becomes for a while. the, the, the yeah, AD. Yeah. The TBT coach becomes the athletic director. Uh, uh, so that was, that was, that was just, I mean, from that aspect alone, it was just like bizarre. Everything. A lot of it to me was just everything got out. Like nothing was. Yeah. Usually there's a hidden candidate, and there was none of that in this search. That we knew, like you knew everything almost in real time. Like the fact that Shirts is like that he signed the memorandum memorandum of understanding with St. Louis. I cannot believe that got out. And like that was just people were just talking about that plain as day. Like how did that get out? That was that was the well, craziest part to me to the search. I think it got out so to save face because and also why did he sign one? What was what was he have gained by signing one of those? To me, I wonder if he. I, my first question was, did, did he have an agent? Probably not. Like, did it, if he didn't have an agent, he probably just didn't know what he was doing. That yeah. that was my first impression. He probably didn't have an agent because why would you sign it? Um, especially when you know jobs can open later after the NCAA tournament. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That was. It was. Uh, like you said every Tennessee. But I mean, the Tennessee job, you had like 12 people turn the job down publicly. And it didn't get to the here. It got to like the eighth or ninth guy. Now it was getting, getting close, though. So. It was getting yeah, close. Yeah. They had to settle for Chris Magdino Gaudio guy. Yeah. So um, it may end up being a good hire for them in the long run. Like he may produce results, but that coaching search, that was ridiculous. Yeah. That, 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 that provided some much needed giggles when we needed it as Kentucky fans. Yeah, I mean it was uh, was pretty crazy, pretty crazy week. Oh. And just in general, I mean this has been a wild week. Um, yep. A bunch of people have taken a dive with us at KSR Plus. That's been fun on the board. Uh, it's, I mean basketball. There's basketball stuff crazy, but we're still doing football. Uh, a lot of football yeah. stuff content coming. So come. We'll have some behind the scenes stuff. We'll, we'll good to have the podcast from too. Spring practice. Um, I'm. Admittedly, going I'm I'm going on spring break next week, but uh, I think we're still going to have eleven personnel like it. If I'm not mistaken, I think we'll figure something out. Well, we'll figure it out. Uh, but we're back. You can squeeze time away. You might get a little sunburnt, sauced up eleven personnel. <laughs> so, so eleven personnel after dark. There we go. We eleven we personnel be drunk. We we've done edition. that before. Yeah, yeah. Um, but nevertheless. Should be a good time. It's good to have you back, Luckett. Hope the family's all well. It's good to be back with all of you on the KSR YouTube channel. Appreciate y'all subscribing and following along. We're Adam Luckett. I'm Nick Roush. Go Cats and go Kroger. 